Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, When Referrals Aren't Enough, How to Build a Consistent Pipeline Every Month. I'm Amber Noble, a Marketing Assistant at Barracuda MSP, and I'm happy to be moderating today's session. Today, I am joined by Brad Stoller, National Director of Business Development at the PT Services Group. During today's webinar, Brad will share a variety of methods to create leads and appointments, as well as the impact of in-house versus outsourcing meeting scheduling. Before we get started, let's do some brief housekeeping. During the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to share them using the questions or chat panels to the right of the Zoom webinar screen. At the conclusion of the webinar, you will be prompted to complete a brief survey. Please take a moment to tell us what you think so we can continually improve our content and quality of our online events. Now, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Brad to begin today's presentation. Take it away, Brad. All right, well, thanks, Amber, and, and uh, I really uh, appreciate uh, being asked to, to present today. And Barracuda is, uh, is a group that uh, I've uh, I kind of admired secretly, I guess, from the background. You guys have done a lot of great things, and, and uh, I, I'm, I'm sure anybody who's, who's a customer of yours is uh, succeeding well. You guys really have your act together, so I'm just happy to be here. Um, and today's subjects, when referrals aren't enough, um, this is an area where I talk to a lot of MSPs all the time, constantly, and this seems to be an area that uh, is always on their, their mind. It always comes out in our conversations. And um, so, so I thought I would spend a little time on this, but before I go in just too deep here, just who am I and you know, why on earth did you, did you listen to me? Um, well, first of all, uh, I am not an MSP. So that's, that's actually an advantage for, for at least of the marketing and sales, because um, I think sometimes we have to keep the two separate um, as far as the marketing side and the sales side and um, the MSP side. But, um, but my background, actually, um, I, I spent some time as a professional golfer. Uh, I've owned uh, numerous franchises. I've been involved with real estate, real estate investing, owned my own construction company, I've done marketing consulting, um, own an insurance agency, and and now uh, I'm with the PT Services Group, and um, we're kind of, we're coming up with ways to you know grow our company, uh, which involves many of the same principles that uh, we've we've found uh, to be successful with our group. Is a lot of the things that we'll be talking about today to help you out as well. So um, so enough about me. This isn't about me. It's all it's about you guys that uh, you know are on the webinar here today. So when referrals aren't enough, and how to build the consistent pipeline every month. So uh, one of the things that when I talk to MSPs is I always get this when I ask the question, you know, what are you doing right now? What's your plan to grow your business? And it always comes out almost, I'd say 95% of the time it comes out where, well, we've been growing from word of mouth. And that's a great way to grow. Actually, it really, really is. And there's no better way to do it. I don't care how much marketing dollars you spend or whatever, but a referral is just a great way to grow. So, so why on earth is this is so good? Well, first of all, the relatively easy sales. You don't have to be a seasoned sales pro to close a referral. Uh, somebody who's taken the time and they think highly enough of you to, to refer somebody to call you or you to call them, there's an element of trust that's already built in there. So it does make it somewhat of an easier sale. Not that any sale is easy, but it's easier. Uh, something else is, you know, with those easier sales, you get a pretty high close rates. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit later. Everyone seems to be happy. I mean, the people that uh, they referred the, client, the prospect to you, they're happy if you're taking care of them. You're happy because they're now a customer. And the customer's happy because they feel like um, you know, you're going to be doing a great job for them. So really, you get to come in there and you get to be the superhero. <laughs> so, so why on earth wouldn't we just rely on referrals all the time if it's really, really that good? And, um, you know, as they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. And this one is it. Referrals are great. And as long as you have enough of them, it's wonderful. But the problem is, is referrals don't always come in. You can't place an order for, hey, I need uh, four referrals this month. Well, that doesn't really quite happen that way. Some months you get plenty. Some months you go without any. 
I talk to a lot of people to say, gosh, we should spend months since we've had a good referral. So, and then they, and then to turn right around the next month, they get four or five, say, oh, we're busy now. So it's a roller coaster ride. And consistency is not something that uh, tends to be uh, a word used when it comes to referrals. So a lot of, a lot of MSPs out there, or just any business that actually just kind of struggles if they're relying only on referrals alone. And of course, um, it's not going to get really any easier because we have a, something called, yeah, competition. And if you've ever done this, if you've never done it, try it. Google managed service providers in your city, and you'll see all these little red dots po poking up. And there's more and more of them that come up all the time. So we're getting more and more MSPs. Let's face it. Anybody, if they know anything about computers, can literally put a sign on their door and call themselves a managed service provider if they want to. It doesn't mean they're any good, but just know it, it's getting there. And, of course, with that increased competition, um, more businesses now have MSPs. Um, new businesses is just tougher to get because of that increased competition. There's, there's only so many businesses, and it just makes sense mathematically. If there's more people out there providing the service, obviously the pie keeps getting a little smaller. And again, referrals aren't always enough to reach the growth goals in most cases. Um, you know, a lot of times be before you were the knight in shining armor, I guess, when somebody referred you, and, and sometimes we kind of feel like uh, <laughs> we're this guy on the right. Uh, it's not the knight in shining armor, but we're on some beat up horse with a rope trying to you know, rope that prospect, and the prospect is trying to run as fast as he can from you. So sometimes it's, uh, that's the way we feel um, sometimes, uh, but it doesn't have to necessarily be that way. In fact, um, some of the big MSPs out there, and I've talked to a lot of them as well, there is good news because they figured it out and they're growing like crazy and they're doing an exceptionally good job. They've gotten very large. They're good into multi cities. And you, I'm sure you know somebody, if you're not one of them, you know somebody who's doing that. And everybody kind of looks up and says, wow, wonder how they're doing it. Well, I've had a lot of, a lot of time to talk with, uh, with a lot of these uh, very, very successful MSPs. And uh, so what do they do that, that others don't? Well, first of all, they have a really good process or system-driven business. And by that, they have a role for everyone. And everybody, they know their role. They know what they're supposed to do. They don't deviate much from it, and they're very, very good, and they're very, very efficient uh, in that type of a system. They also very, very much understand that there is a balance between operations and sales, and you really cannot grow without the other one. You, you, for example, you can't just hire a bunch of new techs and build up your operations, but you don't have enough sales to warrant it because then you can't afford to pay them sooner or later, you know, that implodes. On the other side, you can't just grow your sales without having the back office to support those sales. And just a, a quick story. I remember talking to, he was, this gentleman was part of the MSP 501 and uh, very, very seem on the outside, seemed very, very successful. He's one of the, uh, the, on the smaller companies on that list. And I went down and met with him personally, just asked him how business was. And he goes, gosh, it's great. You know, we've been growing like crazy. And I said, well, great. So how are you growing? What's your secret? And he says, we've been using Google AdWords. We're getting customers in left and right. Wonderful. So that was the end of discussion, right? I was going to walk out the door and you know, it's over. Congratulations. Good luck. Um, hey, I'll talk to you in six months and see how it's going again or something like that. But on the way out, I remember turning around and asking him, so um, how's that, um, how's it going for you operationally wise? And I swear you could have heard a pin drop. <laughs> that stopped the conversation totally. And then uh, he kind of uh, admitted that, well, in all honesty, we've, we've grown a little too fast. And um, I lost some operations guys because, uh, well, they were being overworked. Um, so I've actually had to stop the growth totally because we got to re we have to regear ourselves a little bit um, so we can handle the sales that we brought in. So there has to be that balance between operations and sales. So don't get caught up 
on one side or the other. Just make sure they grow. You have to recruit sales. You have to recruit operations people. And you have to kind of keep a balance with that. So enough on that. But another thing that top MSPs get it with is they have a very, very good system for lead generation, whether they use Barracuda or they do it on their own. They just have a system for it. They, they don't ignore referrals because we know it's very good. So they have a system for, for generating referrals. Um, they have a system uh, for networking, other marketing efforts. And yes, they do have a very, very good system for cold calling. I don't know a single top MSP that I've talked to that does not heavily involve cold calling to fill in those gaps. So some of the other things that the top MSPs are doing is they have a very good understanding that there is a difference between a warm referral appointment and a colder in nature appointment. Those referrals, very, very quick sales cycle. There's a problem. That's why somebody has referred them to you. But a colder nature appointment, they may not have a need today. So the sales cycle tends to be longer than that. The top MSPs understand this. There is a different closing ratio with colder nature appointments versus warm referrals. And they also understand hey, we need to have a different approach with colder in nature appointments than we do with the warm referrals. Um, another thing they do is they focus on what we refer to as their bread and butter clients. So in other words, they don't just, they don't go cold calling for the whales all the time. If you, and a whale is just simply one of those big massive clients that uh, could really massively change your company and just one client. They can also massively change it when they leave. <laughs> but, um, but that's not what they focus on. They focus on those clients that tend to pay their bills each and every month. And I will say that this part of especially understanding the sales cycles and the difference in those cycles, it's probably one of the biggest, I won't say mistakes, but it's a mindset that the average MSP doesn't quite understand or they don't embrace. And that is they treat all appointments, whether it's colder in nature or referrals, they treat them all the same. And that really, really does inhibit uh, the ability for them to, um, to grow. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit later as well. Some other things that the top MSPs are really good at, they are relentless on the phones. I mentioned earlier, that they all have a system uh, for cold calling. Um, it's not uncommon. The ones that I talk to, they, they, they'll usually have an inside salesperson or maybe even a couple of them that they make 50 to 70 or sometimes they make 100 calls a day for new prospects and they have to do it day in and day out. And they have a system that those inside sales people must, have, must follow and they have to reach so many appointments. So they also have an understanding that it really does take some sales ability uh, for the colder in nature appointments. They do have a sales system and a follow-up system. And that's something, again, um, I can't stress enough that there has to be some sales ability or at least um, recognize that you cannot just <laughs> treat a cold call appointment the same as, as one of those referrals. So I can't stress that enough. So by the way, if you have any questions while we're going through this, I don't necessarily like to do all the talking. Uh, it's kind of tough in a webinar format that you guys are listening. But if you do have a question, be, you know, feel free to put it in the chat. And Amber, uh, just you know, interrupt me if, if we have a question, if, if somebody has something they want to talk about real quick. But um, so we'll keep on going. So how can you get enough appointments? Well, the good news is most MSPs, uh, computer IT consultants, the one thing that you guys do have that is exceptionally great is that your mindset is very much engineer oriented in that type of a mindset. So, hey, let's, let's use that to your advantage. Let's just reverse engineer the process, you know, so we can figure out, you know, A, how many appointments you need and, and how you go about getting them then. So if we're going to reverse engineer what you need, first of all, you have to have a goal that you start out with. 
So a common goal that I hear a lot is, hey, we really would like to get $2,500 of monthly recurring revenue each and every month. And, you know, if you're averaging, you know, twelve fifty per client per month, so that that's simple math. It's just two sales per month. I mean, that's a good goal. So closing ratios. This is something else that you're going to need to know, and, and I'm going to spend just a little bit of time on this because there is a big difference between closing ratios between your referrals and colder nature appointments. So referrals, again, when somebody's coming to you, they have a problem. Somebody's already said that you're great. So, yeah, they tend to be easier sales. From my conversations with MSPs across the country, um, they're telling me that um, you know 50% is very, very conservative. Some of them telling me it's more than that. Some of them tell me, oh, we close everything. Well, my answer to that is, yeah, I don't think you close everything. <laughs> if you do, you're probably taking on customers you shouldn't be taking. So I, I wouldn't try and don't feel bad if you don't close everything. In fact, if you, if you do have 100% close rate, something's wrong. Uh, you're taking on the wrong kinds of customers, and you need to kind of weed a few of those out. Not everybody can be a good fit. Um, but colder in nature appointments, you know, most of those, again, I, I must stress these are for quality appointments, not just an appointment to say you got something on your calendar, but these are good prospects that seem to fit your criteria uh, for a good customer. But a colder in nature appointments, you know, I'm here an average of around 20%. You know, you could be 25, it could be 15. Some of that really, really just depends on the skill level you have at, at sales. But let's just assume that uh, 50% for referrals and 20% is what we're gonna use uh, for our colder in nature appointments. So we'll uh, put things together here. So we understand that two appointments equals one sales if you're doing referrals. So our colder in nature appointments, it's gonna take you roughly five appointments to equal one sale. So we're going to have to, in, or, in order to get uh, the um, two and five, seven appointments a month, we're really gonna to have to set a few more than that. So we're gonna probably need to have eight to 10 total set appointments each month. And the reason being is that some of those are gonna cancel, they may reschedule um, for whatever reasons. So we just have to, to set just a few more than what we actually need. We have to understand that. And the last thing we do, we have to understand that there's going to be a ramp up period. And that's what we're now gonna to refer to as a sales pipeline. And I have this thing called warm 250. It's not my idea, it's not my terminology. For those of you who have heard of true methods, Gary Pika, this is his terminology, is what he uses, I like it. Uh, he calls it the warm 250. So those are those, the, the warm 250 represents those prospects that aren't ready to buy today, but they're still really good prospects. They fit your criteria to be a customer. Uh, they're just not ready today, so you have to make sure you do something to stay in touch with those people. So we want to make sure that uh, part of our understanding is that a sales pipeline is part of the process, and not everybody is going to be ready to close today. But at some point, if you stay in touch, you know, they will. So if you look at the overall picture, it's not just about the number of appointments you need, it's the type of appointments. So you're gonna need, you're gonna have some referrals that you can probably hopefully count on each month. Um, you're gonna have to have some cold calls and cold appointments. And then anything else uh, such as marketing efforts that might drive some traffic to you as long as they fit. And again, that's where Barracuda comes in. Um, we have to factor all these in for our overall plan. So I hope that makes sense to you. So at this point, really the choice, it's really yours. You know, the referrals obviously are important, but when it comes to the cold calling and the colder nature appointments, you do have some choices on how to carry this out. So you can do it yourself. You know, a lot of, a lot of you do that right now, or I should say many MSPs tell me they do it. When it comes right down to it, they haven't done it at all. <laughs> so that's why they're falling short. Um, you can outsource it, or you can do a little bit of both, so a combination. Um, Personally, I like it when people do a little bit of both. And what I mean by that is don't stop the referral process. Keep doing what it takes to get those referrals. Uh, if you've got a salesperson, yeah, fine. If you, if you run across who, somebody you'd like to talk to, call them up. 
Um, even if you're outsourcing, that's fine. Um, but the combination does seem to make a lot of sense. So let's just take a look real quick. If you're going to do it in house, you know, some of, some of the pros, some of the cons, let's talk about the good and you know, why on earth you'd want to do this, you know, by yourself. A lot of the MSPs that I've talked to say they really like the idea that they control the process. Uh, they've got dashboards. They can tell uh, live, you know, when somebody makes so many calls, they know how many calls it takes to reach people. And out of all those conversations, they know that it takes, let's say, 10 conversations to give one appointment. I mean, they have all the metrics down. Uh, wonderful. It's a control thing. And if you are one of those people that really have to have that control, then an in-house is a great way to do it. You get instant feedback. So those those are probably the two biggest reasons why people would want to do it in-house. So so why, what are some of the reasons that you might want to consider maybe not doing it in-house? Well, the big one, and I hear this from everyone I talk to, even if they're successful um, at it, they still have management headaches. So there are vacation days, there's sick days, constant supervision. You have to stay on top of it because as soon as you take, you know, the foot off the gas, so to speak, you know, there's going to be a little sloughing off. So you got to constantly monitor that. And that's all taking time that you could be spending on the back end to make sure you take care of the customers you do bring in and the ones that are there. There's a lot of training time involved. And of course, whether you are personally doing the training, or you have a staff member doing the training, either way, you're losing a lot of productivity, which you know what that means. The last thing is it's expensive. Everybody on this line, I'm sure you have employees or you wouldn't be able to, to have an MSP business. You know what it costs to have one employee making phone calls, at least I think you do, but from what I'm hearing, it's anywhere from 40,000 Fifty thousand a year, somewhere in that range, to have a good appointment setter on staff. Now that's before benefits, vacation time. <laughs> so you can see the cost can can obviously run way up there if you're uh, supplying them benefits. And if you have a good appointment setter, then <laughs> you want to make sure and take care of them. Um, and part of the reason is that everybody that I've talked to has told me this. It is very, very difficult to find somebody who can actually do the job of making 70 calls a day, 100 calls a day, without getting burned out, quit, or, or you fire them. And so, like I said, if you find somebody that's doing a, a very good job, make sure you take care of them, pay them, make sure they feel welcome, and so they don't quit or you or you have to fire them and start the process all over again. So it's on the outsourcing side, so let's take a look at that real quick here. You know, the advantages of outsourcing, I think probably most everybody but can kind of figure that out, but management headache is, is gone. And that allows you to spend more time on your business rather than managing, you know, that process and staying on top of them all the time and, and watching all the numbers like a hawk all the time. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't watch it at all, but it has drastically reduced the amount of time that you should be spending on this part of your business. Um, obviously, you're going to be saving on labor costs. There is a consistency factor as well. So if you have a good appointment setting firm that you outsource this function to, they're going to be calling no matter what. There's no vacation time. There's no sick pay. Um, you don't have to pay in benefits. And I also put in here, I hear this too. You don't have to hear the constant whining from somebody after they've heard about 35 no's in a row. <laughs> so that's, um, that's kind of a, a big deal sometimes with some people as well. And the nice thing about it is appointments do. They literally show up on your calendar and you don't have to do anything up until that point. Once it's on the calendar and you've been briefed, then you can actually go out on those appointments. So there's always going to be some negative as well. So let's take a look at the, at the, at the negatives of the outsourcing. And that is, there's a perceived fear of losing control of your process. The only thing I can say about that is, if everybody in the world felt this way, why do businesses outsource 
their IT functions to you. If they felt a lose, losing control, then nobody would outsource and you guys wouldn't have a business. So we do have to make sure that there's, there's some trust that your clients place in you to know that you're going to actually do what you say you're going to do. And there has to be that same type of trust in an outsourced uh, appointment setting firm as well. Something else I hear a lot, uh, I, I mean, I do hear this quite a bit, and this is one of the reasons that we decided to get in to the managed service um, industry and computer IT consultants, is that I hear this a lot. Quality of appointments can be sketchy with the wrong firm. And again, I'm gonna use the example, anybody can set up, anybody that has anything to do with computers can set a sign on their door and call themselves an MSP. I know this because I go out and I personally visit and every once in a while I'll get snookered and I see their dress and I literally go up to their home. It's a residence and they live in a bad section of town. Ah, oh, geez. So I just wasted, you know, 25 minutes of my driving time. Um, I don't bother to go into those places, by the way. Um, but the thing about it is that's an MSP. So if, if the business were to hire that person or maybe the, Maybe it's a one or two man show, and I'm not saying there's not some good ones out there because there are, but there's you know who I'm talking about, the ones that aren't very good. They give a bad name to the MSB industry. We're the same thing with appointment setting. There's some good ones and bad ones. So you just have to understand that. When you hear somebody say that, um, hey, appointment setting, we tried that, it didn't work. Well, they could say the same thing about, um, yeah, we tried uh, outsourcing our IT functions and it didn't work. So it's the same argument. So let's talk just a little bit about um, you know, the PT services group, what we do. One of the things that we always do with our clients is when you come aboard, we're very hard to, to make sure people can understand what makes you different. So we're no different. So what's different about the PT services group? You know, how do we do things? Well, first of all, we have been around since 1992. We had a, our celebration, our 25th celebration last fall. It was, a, it was a massive celebration. It was, it was a good time, a lot of celebrating going on, and everybody, um, we, have, we actually have uh, many of our employees that have been around, maybe not since 1992. I know we had a couple 20-year um, employees that have been with us for a long time. Um, we, there's a reason, you know, that the, the business has lasted that long. We are known for quality, not necessarily quantity, and the reason we do that, and, and we, we stress quality over quantity, is that a lot of our competitors will say they'll, they'll supply so many appointments, and it sounds great. Gosh, we're going to get 12 appointments every month. Wow, that's, that's great. And, and the story that I hear all the time is, yeah, I went on those appointments from that other company. They said, gosh, they said a lot of appointments. From I had 12 appointments last month. And then I asked the question, so how many are qualified? Yeah, that's usually the response I get. It's quiet. <laughs> and they said, well, two or three of them actually worked out pretty well. And, well, what about the other nine or ten that, uh, that didn't work out? Well, that's a waste of time. So we don't, we don't do that. We do everything we can to get rid of the ones who don't fit. We'd rather give you two or three or four that are really good, and you can maximize your time on those. And, in effect, by saving your time, you end up increasing your closing rate uh, we have a process that, that allows for us to have quality over quantity, and we have a department that's called our quality assurance team, and it's our process, and the way it works is they're actually going to listen to all the calls that our marketing associates make on our client's behalf, the ones that, are, that are, an appointment is set for. Uh, before that appointment can show up on anybody's calendar, our quality assurance has to give it the thumbs up. So they're going to listen to make sure that our marketing associate asked all the qualifying questions that our client and we agree need to be asked so we can determine if they're a good fit or not. So if they miss question number three, which might be, you know, how many end users do you currently have? Well, that's an important uh, bit of information for you if you're going to go out there. Um, if they only have two users, then, you know, you're kind of, you might be wasting your time. Um, so they will have to go back and call the, the prospect in a very professional manner and, and mention that I forgot to ask you, but how many people do you have that are actually using computers right now? So 
38. Wonderful. I will make sure that John knows that when he gets out there and he appreciates, you know, being brief before he heads out there to make sure that he's not going to waste your time. Perfect. Okay, great. The next thing they're going to listen to is the tone of the call. I hear this quite a bit as well, that uh, people will go on appointments and when they show up, that person uh, at the reception, they'll, <laughs> they say, sorry, Mr. Jones wanted me to tell you that, um, he doesn't feel this is a very good use of his time. We're not going to switch. We're very happy with the, with the MSP that we're using right now. Um, and quite honestly, the only reason he took the appointment was because the person on the phone just wouldn't take no for an answer. And finally he just said, fine, just put me down at 1030 just so we could get him off the phone. Um, that's something that we are trained. Our, our, our quality assurance group is trained to listen to that tonality. And if they hear that, that won't show up on your calendar. It has to, we have to prove to our quality assurance that yes, they really, really do want to meet uh, with XYZ company before we can uh, have it approved. So those are some pretty big things. The last thing we do is, as far as quality, you know, it's one thing to say we, we provide quality, but what we actually do is when our clients go out on the appointments, we demand their feedback. I know demand's a strong word. I'm going to use demand <laughs> because it's our scorecard. It's our metric. And what we do is we, we ask for that feedback and they have to tell us is that appointment, was it just not right? Was it qualified or was it highly qualified? And across all the calls that we do, 85% of the time that feedback comes back as it's either qualified or highly qualified. So 8.5 times out of 10, you're gonna say, yep, that appointment is right on. And that's you telling us, that's not us making up the numbers. We keep track, that's one of the measurements that we use for our business. So before we do any calls at all, we actually have an in-depth orientation process where usually it takes about a week to two weeks, week and a half to two weeks, uh, where we get to know your company very well. We do a lot of research. We do a lot of question and answers uh, with our clients. Uh, we work with you to determine why somebody should do business with you, which is your unique selling proposition. It's very, very important. And by the way, please don't say we provide excellent service and we're quick response time because everybody says that. We want to go deeper. So what are your strengths? You know, what are you good at that everybody else kind of struggles? And, and we have to kind of figure that out. Um, before we call, we have what we call a kickoff call. And, and what we do is we get all our marketing associates in, in the room. Um, we'll get you on the phone as well in a conference room. And then they do a role play. So you get a chance to hear how they're going to represent you and the language they use. And they also like to interact with our clients. So they love to hear stories. They absolutely love to hear how you went in there after somebody had, had mentioned that um, their infrastructure uh, blew up <laughs> and they're down for two days. And they love to hear how you go in there and work all night and you do everything you can to get them up and running. Um, that, that's that's beauty, beautiful music to their ears. And it helps them get through uh, the objections when they're on the phone trying to make appointments with your prospects. Um, we don't stop there. Most companies will actually stop at a kind of an abbreviated orientation process. They then they start calling and, and you're on your own. We really feel that uh, this is the part where we just kind of get warmed up. So what we actually do is every three, six, nine months, especially that first year, we have return on investment calls. These calls are designed to go over your pipeline and to see you know, if you've had a success in selling yet or just where you stand on everything. So we kind of keep track of what's going on. Uh, you get to work with our client success group. Uh, you have one main person that you work with. We don't ask that you call and you talk to a different person every time. It's, it's one person and you get to know that person very well. We also provide sales training. And this is in our recent pilot uh, that lasted almost a year this is one of the issues that really came out really, really strong. Probably the second biggest issue other than just not having enough uh, potential clients to see. And that is, what do we do when we get there? And because this is different than a warm referral. So a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, our pilots struggled with this at first. So we set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with a Sandler sales training coach. And uh, Dan, our coach, works, works all of our clients now. And he spends a 30 minute sessions. We usually ask that just meet with him three times. And it's all about, you know, how do you, how do you build trust? 
what should you do on that first appointment? Should you just go in there and expect to just do an audit right away? Those are the types of things that, uh, that our sales coach goes over with you. He answers the questions and it just has been worked work out wonderfully. We have ongoing webinars for sales ideas that we do as well. So we're really all about, if we could close the deal for you, we, we would, we haven't figured out how to go on your appointments with you <laughs> or for you, but we're, almost to that point. We do everything we can to so you can close better. And other things about our company is we do not believe in long-term contracts. So you can come and go as you please. Uh, if you don't feel it, we're, you know, we're not going to force you to stay. We want you to stay because you feel you're getting a good value for what you invest with us. Um, you do pay by the hour. We don't have, we do not want to have any incentives to simply schedule poor appointments and then give you a bill every month. I know there's a lot of places do they call pay for performance, but we just don't believe in that model. Um, with us, you can adjust the number of hours to fit your needs each month. So if you need six is your magic number of what you need for your appointments, fine. We'll, we'll figure out a program that'll get you somewhere in that area. There's always a range. It might be four to six, five to seven, somewhere in that range. And if you feel one month that you, you don't need that many appointments, we can back it down. And at the same time, if you feel that you need more appointments, you want to go faster, then fine. Then uh, we can always, you know, add a, so you can go down and up as much as you want. And the big thing is you can stop any time without any penalty whatsoever. So that's pretty much, I know we're, we tried to keep this uh, brief today. I know I covered a lot of information today. Um, so where do we go from here? So if you feel like you'd like to learn a little bit more about at least our appointment setting program and if it might be a good fit or not for you, you know, I'd invite you just give me a call or send me an email and I'll reach out to you then just mainly just to see if, if we could be a, a fit or not. And I will say that not everybody is a good fit for us. Um, it's just like not every prospect is going to be a good fit for you, but, um, but we're going to have a candid conversation and I guarantee you always will learn something. At least I, that's my goal with everybody. So no harm, no foul. Uh, if you do feel that uh, we might be a good fit for you, then you know we have a special promo that we've done just for the people on this webinar. So during the, from now through the month of August, just mention that uh, you were on the webinar and then we've got uh, some pretty good deals, some substantial discounts. And I won't go into that uh, right now, but just give me a call. I'll go over the discount with you, but it's really designed. So really cost should not be an issue. And that's, that's what we wanted to do. So with that, um, Amber, I've pretty much talked way too much here, but are there any questions that anybody might have at all? I'd be happy to, to answer anything. Um, actually, Rod, we had a question earlier on, but it looks like you, for the most part, answered it when you went into talking okay. about uh, PT services. So I would just like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. I'm gonna throw the poll up, and if everyone could just take a minute, to uh, answer the questions that are in the poll. Um, and again, if anyone has any last minute questions that Brad maybe didn't answer, feel free to throw them in the chat panel and we'll get to them right now. But uh, otherwise, uh, thank you everybody for attending today and, and thank you Brad for your excellent insight into this topic. Okay. Well, Amber, again, I, I really appreciate uh, the invitation. I, I like to thank everybody for taking the time out of their busy day and hopefully you picked up an idea or two. So and feel free to give me a call and, and we can talk. That's no problem there whatsoever. All right, looks like we don't have any last minute questions. Thank you everyone once again and uh, have a great rest of your days.